Hello everyone, I'm Jensen. Today is Friday, January 22nd, and as more people get the coronavirus vaccine, more questions are popping up. So I'm here to break down what we know to get you in the loop. So let's start with some basics. In the United States, there are currently two coronavirus vaccines that have been cleared for emergency use authorization. But most vaccines take years, even decades to develop. So how on earth did we get a vaccine for COVID-19 so quickly? Well, one of the biggest things to keep in mind is that development for these vaccines didn't start with this pandemic. Scientists had a bit of a head start. How, you may ask? Well, COVID-19 comes from a family of viruses, including the SARS coronavirus from 2002 and the MERS coronavirus from 2012. So a number of the researchers developing these COVID-19 vaccines had already studied those similar viruses, giving them a good idea of what works and what doesn't. Scientists learned how this family of viruses behaves, their biology, and about the spike protein, which is what lets the virus into our cells to infect us. So when the pandemic hit, scientists already knew that when a person has antibodies that recognize that spike protein, it could stop the virus from infecting them, which is the key to the vaccines we have right now. They both use messenger RNA to build the coronavirus spike protein. Our immune system then comes to the rescue to fight off that protein and you build immunity to the virus. But let's take a closer look at what mRNA actually is because it is so important in understanding what these vaccines are actually doing. Again, both Pfizer and Moderna developed their vaccines using mRNA. So what does that even mean? And why is it so groundbreaking? Well, what most vaccines do, like most of you know, is put a weakened or inactivated germ into your body, which then triggers an immune response and teaches the body how to fight back if it ever runs into the big guy, you know, the full strength germ or virus. But throw that out the window because that's not how mRNA vaccines work. Instead, mRNA teaches your body how to fight back without ever exposing it to the actual virus. How? Well, mRNA vaccines teach some of our cells to make one part of the virus. So for COVID, they're making that spike protein that we just talked about. Once that protein is made, our cells break down the mRNA and toss it in the trash. On its own, that spike protein is harmless, you know, like the bully who only talks big when he's got his friends behind him. But what it does do is trigger an immune response so your body learns what the invader looks like and starts building an antibody army to be ready to fight off the coronavirus before it is ever actually exposed to it. The former director of the CDC put it really well. He said, think of mRNA as an email sent to your immune system that shows what the virus looks like and gives it instructions on how to kill it. Then, like Snapchat, it just disappears. But even when that message goes away, your body still has the information it needs to protect itself against COVID-19. And we always seem to lump these two vaccines together, Pfizer and Moderna. And we know they're both manufactured using mRNA, like we just explained, but are there any actual differences? Ohio Department of Health Chief Medical Officer Dr. Bruce Vanderhoff says the differences are relatively minor and most have to do with logistics, like storage. The Moderna vaccine can actually be stored in the kinds of freezers that many health providers have already. It's the same kind of freezer that, for example, is used for the MMR vaccine. The Pfizer vaccine requires a form of ultra cold storage um, until it's ready to be deployed. And both vaccines require two doses, but there's a slight difference in the length of time between them. So for Moderna, the second dose comes 28 days after the first, and for Pfizer, it's just 21 days. What if you've already had COVID-19? Can you just pass on the vaccine? Well, experts say if you can, you should get the vaccine anyway. Prometica's Dr. Brian Kaminsky says that right now, doctors believe the immunity gained from the vaccine should be more durable and more permanent than the immunity developed from the disease process itself. Right now, we believe that natural immunity uh, perhaps wanes a little bit more quickly because uh, those people who have uh, only a mild version of COVID may not have a robust immune response. But keep in mind, you should not get vaccinated while you actively have COVID-19. Kaminsky said you should be recovered, meaning 10 days after you first started showing symptoms, along with no fever and an improvement in your condition. This week, Ohioans 80 and older have started getting vaccinated. And next week, even more Ohioans qualify. But what if you need help? 
registering for your vaccine. We have a list going through all our area counties, giving you information on how you can get registered, where you can get your vaccine on our website right now. And I have a link in the description of this video. Plus, you can text the word vaccine to 419-248-1100 to get that list sent to your phone or just use that number to send a specific question or, you know, just say hi. But that is all I have for you today. If you liked this video, hit that like button and of course subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Jensen and now you are in the loop.